Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be doing our predictions for UFC 235. We got John Bones Jones taking on Anthony Smith here. I'm going to jump right into the main event and give my predictions for this fight. I got John Jones retaining his light heavyweight title against Anthony Smith here. And uh, let me tell you my reasons why I think John Jones is going to beat Anthony Smith here. It's because John Jones never lost a fight in the UFC, you know. I think John Jones has better striking than Anthony Smith. He's a better wrestler. Um, and I think he has better submissions than Anthony Smith. You know what I mean? Anthony Smith is a tough, durable guy. But to be honest, I don't think he deserves this title shot here. You know what I mean? He beat Shogun. He beat Rashad Evans and invoking Ozdemir, and they give him a title shot, okay? First of all, Rashad Evans is old and uh no disrespect, but he's old and washed up just like Shogun. You know what I mean? Volkan Ozdemir is another guy, you know, that I've seen fight in Bellator and who couldn't even win the tournament in the light heavyweight division. So, therefore, you know, I don't think Ozdemir is that good also. You know, he also, Anthony Smith has 13 losses, man. You know what I mean? This man lost a body shot from Tiago Santos. I mean, if he can't make it out the second round with Santos, what makes you think he can make it out of a fight with John Jones, man? You're talking about two different type of fighters, a guy on a whole different level than Santos. I got John Jones beating Anthony Smith. I think uh, Anthony Smith is a tough, durable dude. He has decent, clean striking. He has a whole lot of heart, man. But... I think John Bones Jones is going to get the job done easy here. Um, There's not too much to talk about here. You know, I just see a one-sided ass whooping. <laughs> I got John Jones beating Anthony Smith, man. It just, I don't see how I could get it done. I'm going to jump right into this welterweight fight. We got Tyron Willie putting his title on the line against Kamara Usman, the Nigerian nightmare. I'm liking T. Willie here, man. I'm liking the champion here, and I'm going to tell you the reasons why. Experience, number one, you know what I mean? Look at the competition and the high-level fighters that Tyron Willie had to face, like Wonder Boy, Robbie Lawler, and Darren Till, you know. <clears throat> he has a few title defenses under his waist now. I mean, he's trying to get up there with George St. Pierre and Matt Hughes for title defenses, you know. Um I think Willie is just a better stand-up fighter. He's a better wrestler. I mean, you got a D1 wrestler compared to a Division II wrestler. Um, it kind of reminds me of a fight that happened back in the day between Rashad Evans and uh, Phil Davis. This this fight reminds me of that fight there, you know. I know Usman. Is a tough dude. He's coming off a win off of Dos Anjos and Damian Maya. He's on a big win streak. But I just don't think he's faced a level of competition like Willie. Um, he's younger than Willie. He's 31 years old. Willie's 35. He's the taller fighter. Um, he has a two-inch reach advantage. Uh, his cardio, maybe. It, it could be better than Willie, but, I mean, well, people say Willie look like he slows down, but, I mean, he's fought five rounds fights against Wonder Boy two times in a row. So, um, to me, I don't think his condition is that bad. Um, you know, but I just see their wrestling being so strong that, I mean, I don't think they'll be hitting the mat and, uh, Willie has does the better striking to me, the cleaner uh, kick boxing, more experience against high level competition, and those are uh, my reasons why I'm picking Willie to retain his title here. We got another welterweight fight. We got Robbie Lawler taking on Ben Askren, who's making his debut in the UFC from One FC. Um. I'm liking Ben Askren here getting this fight down uh, down to the ground and winning uh, a decision against Robbie Lawler. I mean, Robbie Lawler has done good against these type of wrestlers in his past, but none of them have the credentials or are as good at wrestling 
has been a uh, masculinist, okay? You got Robbie, who's done well against dudes like Johnny Hendricks and uh, Josh Koscheck, who, who, who like to go to the ground, and he's done well against those kind of guys. But we also seen Robbie struggle with good jiu-jitsu fighters such as Jake Shields and uh, Ronald Chakra Souza. Also, um, uh, Tim Kennedy, you know, um, those are guys that um, actually exploited uh, Robbie Lawler's take down the fence and uh, were able to beat him, you know. It's, it's going to be a tough fight, you know. <clears throat> Robbie has fought the better uh, competition by far, you know. Um, ben Askren, bigger biggest wins are Jay Haran and Douglas Lima. Uh, um, so, you know, Robbie's been fighting the best guys. Um, it's going to be a step up in competition for sure for Ben Askren. Uh, and I think he'll be ready for it, you know. I'm liking Ben Ashburn getting it done by decision. I want to also talk about a UFC bantamweight fight between Cody and Pedro Munoz. <clears throat> Good old USA versus Brazil fight. I got to go with Cody here, the Golden Glove boxer. Um, I think Cody's just going to be too quick for him. I think his footwork. And uh, his boxing is a lot better than Pedro Munoz. I think Pedro's uh, a lot slower. We see him um, in the past have trouble with guys with fast speed, like John Dotson, who actually beat him. I just think that Cody's going to beat him to the punch. He's going to be a lot more quicker. You know, um, I just don't see how Pedro is going to be able to outstrike Cody here. Um you know, even though Pedro is a tough guy, he's coming off a big win over Brian Caraway by TKO. Um, and uh, he beat Brett Johns. I mean, he lost to Dodson and Jimmy Rivera. So, I mean, you know, people are saying Cody's chin is questionable. And maybe if he lands on Cody, he could put him away. You know, I won't be surprised. You know, Pedro's a tough dude. He's a vet. Um he has more experience than Cody does. Uh, Cody has one inch reach advantage. Um, yeah, man. I just think the youth, the no love, is going to get it done here, man. I like Cody, even though Pedro's a tough guy. We're rolling with Cody here, man. Uh, I want to do this featherweight fight between Jeremy Stevens and uh, Zabit. I got to go with my boys to be here. As you see, Jeremy Stevens, he's no stranger to losing. As you can see, he has 15 losses. Um, Zabit, on the other hand, only has one loss. Uh, Zabit is coming off of a big win. I mean, he, he had a submission victory. So, um, you know, Zabit could sub Jeremy Stevens, a little heathen here, you know. Zabit lost. To uh, Moyo Kano on his debut, you know what I mean? So, Jeremy Stevens, he's not the best guy, even though we've seen him with vicious knockouts over Josh Emmett. And, uh, you know, he has power in those hands. But I, I just don't think he's going to be able to land those bombs and catch the beat, you know. The beat is a tall dude, you know, he, he, for the weight class. He has a two-inch reach advantage over Jeremy also, you know. Jeremy, he's just a brawler, man, with a lot of heart and a lot of power. I just don't see uh, Zabit falling into his trap and trying to turn it into a brawl. I think Zabit could be able to get it to the ground if he wants, maybe even look for a submission like he did on Brandon Davis. Uh, but we've seen Zabit eat a lot of shots when he fought Kyle Bakniak. And uh, Jeremy Stevens is that kind of style, you know. He likes to throw a lot of hands. And if, if the beat covers up and uh, give a chance for Jeremy Stevens to drop these bombs, he will. And he could get them hurt. But overall, I like the beat here. Um, so 
it's gonna be my pick for this for that fight, man. We're gonna go to beat. Um yeah, we're gonna go into the light heavyweight division. We got Johnny Walker versus Misha Karkinoff. I'm liking Johnny Walker right now, man. I'm riding the Johnny Walker wave, man. I mean, he's coming off a crazy KO victory over Justin Leddit. And uh, it only took him um, 15 seconds to do that. So he jumped on and took a fight on short notice with Misha Korkinoff, man. I think Misha has faced the better competition. I mean, Johnny Walker, his names are Khalil Roundtree um, and Justin Leddit so far. You know what I mean? We haven't seen too much from the guy, but what we have seen is that the dude's no joke and he's nasty, you know? Um, Misha Korkinoff, on the other hand, is coming off a submission win versus Patrick Cummins. Uh, we've seen his chin tested versus Vulcan Austin Merrill when he got KO'd. Um, you know what I mean? Uh, Glover Teixeira also put him away. Um, so, you know, his chin is a question questionable, you know, and uh, Johnny Walker is the type of guy who's going to want to test that out, you know, very fast and explosive, but to me, I mean, as you see, Misha Korkinoff has a submission victories. Um, we've seen a brand new sub, Johnny Walker, before, who just competed on the last um, <clears throat> UFC fight card in the Czech Republic in Prague. Um, so, yeah, man. I mean, if he could get the fight to the ground and try to work his submission, Johnny Walker could be in trouble. I mean, Misha has fought the bigger names, um, you know, so he's a strong dude, man. But um, you'll never know. Sometimes these guys tend to fight a different style for certain matches. But I got Johnny Walker here getting it done. Um, I'm not going to predict every fight on this card. I want to do one more. I'm just pretty much doing, um, really my most, uh, you could say, uh, what, how to say it here, my most, you know, for sure picks that I'm going to get done here. I want to do, uh, Diego Sanchez and, uh, Mickey Gall here. I got to go with my boy Diego here, man. I think the veteran and the experience, uh, Diego Sanchez is going to get it done. Um, he's a very good ground fighter, very aggressive on the feet. I think Diego is the better stand-up fighter, and I think uh, he's a better ground fighter also. I don't see how Mickey Gall is going to get this fight done. I know he's a submission guy. He got beat up by Randy Brown. Um I know Randy Brown's a tall, lanky dude. So, yeah, he probably had to put a stand-up trying to close the distance. Diego's a lot more shorter, more aggressive. Um, Diego's coming off a big win off of Craig White by decision. Um, I could kind of see that happening here. I could see uh, Diego Sanchez grinding this Mickey Gall dude out and getting a decision here. I mean, Mickey Gall only has six fights. Um yeah, man, most confident picks or whatnot. Um, yeah, man, I like John Jones, Woodley. We like in uh Ben Askren. We got Cody, no loves to beat Johnny Walker. We like Diego Sanchez here. Also, I mean, I'm not gonna really break down the rest of these fights here, but um, you know, I'm gonna just give you my quick picks on these fights. We got uh. Marlon Vera versus Frankie Science. Um, I like Marlon Vera getting it done. Um, you know, he's been more active than Frankie Science so far. Um, these are not really my confident, too confident on these picks. But, yeah, we're going to go with Marlon Vera getting it done. Um, want to talk about this Tisha Torres fight. Um, yeah, man, I kind of like, uh, the chick from China getting it, uh, getting it done here against Tisha Torres. Tisha Torres has been on, like, on a 2-5 losing streak, I think. 
Wei Li gets it done here, man. We're going Wei Li. Um, Cody St Stanman versus Alejandro Perez is a tough fight to call. Got United States versus Mexico. Cody Stanman. Um, I think he's a man who lost to Aljamain Sterling before. Uh, he's coming off of a loss. Um, you know what I mean? It's really a tough fight to call here. Um, but if I had to just, you know, risk it, I I like taking Cody maybe here on this fight, man. Um, cause he was on a big win streak before he uh, got that loss to Aljamain Sterling beat. Ryan Carraway, and uh, that's a tough guy to beat. Alejandro Perez, on the other hand, he's been doing pretty well from him, himself also. You know, <clears throat> Alejandro Perez, um, you know what I mean? He beat Eddie Wyland. He's on, a, like, a fucking five-fight, six-fight win streak, dude. So, I mean, that's why I don't really like predicting fights like these. You know, I don't want to be wrong. And I haven't seen what this dude's been doing lately and how active he is. Uh, but, yeah, man. You also got Charles Bird, Edmund Shabazzi, and the Golden Boy. Uh, you know, Shabazzian should get it done. But, you know, Charles Bird's a tough dude. I mean, got good stand-up, decent wrestling. Um yeah, but Sebastian should get the fight done. But, yeah, man, that was pretty much uh, our predictions, man. We're uh, UFC 235. Um, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, like or comment. Um, tell me who's, who you guys got for your picks for UFC 235. So, um, yeah, until next time, guys, man. Catch you guys again.